like we probably weren't even supposed to be doing the podcast. I think I even asked you that once and you laughed at me like, listen, we're, we're still going to do the podcast. But like that was the only time we were leaving the house from like the middle of March or April through August when we were there. It was all we were doing. And to be honest, it make like I, I wouldn't I, I'm, I wouldn't have said I'm leaving f- f- fuck the podcast, but it makes sense. Like it just it 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 didn't make sense to keep living like that. And it just ended. Imagine if we'd been there till April of this year, living, wearing masks on the podcast. Guests didn't want to come. I mean, it would have been awful. It would have been terrible. The way I looked at it was, I looked at what we had done. I looked at the situation in my house. You know, my daughter wasn't in school. Right, you hated that. It was weighing on her. It was weighing on my wife. It was weighing on me. Um, comedy was weighing on me. You know, when you go to pee in the morning and you have a knot in your stomach because you got to go to the store. or The only thing I really enjoyed was that office and that podcast. You know, yeah. it was great to go there at night and find the fucking pill. You know, what kind of pill? You got no computer to see what MD is, so. You wouldn't have looked it up anyway. Yeah, I wouldn't have looked it up anyway. <laughs> you know, uh, it, they were all great things, but all good things must come to an end. Right. And the name of these two episodes is Living in Hell and Not Knowing It. We were living in a hell, and we didn't know it. You know, I lived in hell, and I didn't know it before I went to prison. I lived in hell, and I didn't know it while I was married the first time. And I think the last four years of the podcast, we lived in hell and had no idea we were living there. I mean, it's so weird to say this until the day that I threw the the, the table off the fucking thing to Salami and Brett, and we were done with the boxes, and Damon was helping us pull down the things. When I ripped those walls off, I was like, we were in hell in here. This was just a different form of a prison. You know, when Chris Cornell sings Fell on Black Days, he, he talks about doing time. He, was, he wasn't talking about doing time. He was talking about doing that mental time. Something's weighing on you. Something was weighing on you. The thing that was weighing on me the most was, one, we had done 800 episodes. We had nothing else to prove. Two, I could see that if you stayed a little longer, I thought something bad was going to happen. Either you would snap, call me one day and say you can't do it no more. I could see you slowly going into a depression. It was a slow depression i was calling you at 10 and you were just waking up you couldn't sleep at night so all these things were weighing on me then i thought about myself when i was 21 and i was making good money and i thought i was having a good time being a bookie i thought i was cool and shit and i go i can't keep doing this the rest of my life this is not going to work out i'm not going to get a resume after this you know what happens if i do this till i'm 31 this is funny because i kept Here I was, 21, and I'm like, what if I do this till I'm 21 or 31? What happens if they get busted? How am I going to get another fucking job? You know, how the fuck am I going to get another job? Who's going to hire me? Nobody. I got no fucking work history. So I started looking at you, and then July 12th was when fucking fucknut Newsom (laughs) said there's not going to be any fucking school for the rest of the year. And that devastated me and my wife. And I took my wife in the other room. And I remember saying, I spoke to Jimmy Florentine. His sister-in-law is going to call you. We're going to buy a house. And my wife going, so what are we going to do? I go, we're just going to pick up and leave and move. And we'll get Lee an apartment. You know, and I remember calling Jim and going, Jim, do you think she could find Lee an apartment? And Lee goes, and she goes, she's going to find Lee an apartment, but it's going to be four towns over. This isn't an apartment. 
town, you know, and I'm like, fuck, he's going to have to be like an old bridge, or fucking, uh, you know, Genghis Khan or whatever the fuck town this is, you know. So I started thinking about it and I go, wait a second, this fucking kid is living in hell. Doesn't take a genius. You didn't want to date anymore. Uh, you were eating to kill the pain, the same pain I was killing with the fucking edibles and the fucking Xanax. You know, I had, had that Xanax for fucking 20 years in my house. Never ate a Xanax before. Started watching World News Tonight, and my panic went into... I remember nights that I would get in the car, get out of the car, get in the car, get out of the car. That's not normal. That's not normal. This is the first time I'm exposing this on, on, on a podcast. There was nights that I would get in the car, out of the car 10 times, and then I would just sit on the couch and try to get my composure to me and tell my wife to bring me ice so I could put it on my forehead. Yeah, you never told me that. And she'd go, you got to go do the podcast. Go. You know, like I had all those episodes. Another night I had that when I was going to a UFC fight at my friend Todd's house. You know, I was just the, the, the fear of the, of the fucking... Uh, you know, I didn't want to die, and I didn't want to give it to you, and I didn't want to give it to a guest. I didn't know if it was real. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. So, But back to the situation with my wife, I told my wife, I don't think I'm taking Lee. I'm not doing him any favors. I'm not doing Lee any favors in this life. He's uh, in a rut. I'm in a rut, but I'm in a different rut. I was in a way different rut than you were. I, I was enjoying doing the podcast. I thought we were going a little overboard with the drugs. <laughs> I couldn't believe what I was smoking. Right. You know, I started looking at what I was smoking and knew that this wasn't going to end well. You know, I have stomach problems today, little noises and shit I hear from time to time. Really? You know, what do you think you're going to hear after you eat 10,000 fucking <laughs> edible stars that have that Cerdo in it or whatever it is to hold that gel together? You know, that's got to not be good to you. You know, I mean, we were eating everything. There wasn't anything that we didn't put. We were drinking. I reminded you of the tubes the other day. Oh, yeah. Oh, those my God. Horrible, like little five-hour energies of those. Yeah, they were like five-hour energy, pure THC, 100% tube. <laughs> You know, we were we were talking about that the other night. I mean, there were just so many fucking things we were doing wrong. But the thing I felt I was doing the worst was, it's like what you said. You know, I was bringing you Cuban fried rice, which is 20,000 calories on its own. Well, you did that like twice. It wasn't like every day you were bringing that. And and 